This video we'll be working our college level math even problems for the AccuPlacer. I suggested that you skip number two. I will show this one at the end of the video if you want to see it. Number four, the graph of which of the following equations is straight is a straight line parallel to the graph of y equals 2x. Recall our slope intercept form y equals mx plus b. m here is the slope. So in the case of our problem the slope is 2. Or the given equation the slope is 2. Parallel lines have the same slopes. Parallel lines have equal slopes. So we're looking for one of these equations with a slope of 2. So what we need to do is essentially solve each one of these for y. I'm going to look at C here. 2x minus y equals 4. If you solve for y, you would begin by subtracting 2x on both sides. That leaves negative y is less than, negative y is equal to 4 minus 2x or negative 2x plus 4, however you want to write it. And then there's an implied negative 1 here. We could divide my equation by negative 1. This will yield y equals to positive 2x minus 4. When you're in standard form here, the slope will equal, as you can see here, 2. All right. The slope is equal to negative a divided by b in the form ax plus by equals c. In our case, a is 2, b is minus 1. Well, 2 divided minus 1 would be negative 2, and negative of that is positive 2. So the slope of line c is 2. The slope of our original one is 2. Correct answer is C. Number six, get to the question sentence. What is the number of two bedroom apartments? We're looking for the two bedroom apartments. Apartment building contains 12 units consisting of one bedroom and two bedroom apartments. All right, I'm gonna let, um, I'm gonna let X be my um, number of one bedrooms. And I'm gonna let Y be my number of two bedrooms. I could choose a more descriptive variable, but, you know, T and O can be confused with other other things. We've got a total of 12 of them, so X plus Y is equal to 12. We see that the um, one bedroom rents for 360 and two bedroom rents for 450 so 360 times X my number of one bedroom plus 450 times Y is equal to 4950 now I'm going to show how to solve this one algebraically but far and away the easier way to do this is to use their answers and substitute them in and see which one works out or perhaps easier for you. Um, for instance, if let's just try answer choice A here, 3. If X is 3, the, the answer is the number of two bedroom apartments, which is actually our Y. If Y is 3, then 9 plus 3 would equal 12. Would 9 and 3 satisfy this bottom equation? You just got to substitute to C. Do 360 times 9 plus 450 times 3. Will that work out to be 4950? That's the question here. So you could use your calculator to do um, this arithmetic. It doesn't satisfy, so it's not going to be an, um, a y value of 3. We could try some other value until we indeed got that. Probably the better thing to do would be to start with 5, then we could, could move up or down from there. 
very easy way, simply taking their answer choices and substituting them in until we got a value that works. But here I will show the algebraic method. I'm going to show the substitution method. In this case, I'm going to solve my top equation for either x or y. It doesn't matter. Let me solve for x. So I would be left with x is equal to 12 minus y. From, from here, from here to here, I've simply subtracted y on both sides of the equation. Now, I'm going to substitute what I know x to be. x is 12 minus y. I'm going to substitute that in for x in my second equation right in there. Boom. So now I have 360, 360 times what we know x to be, which is this 12 minus y. And then I leave everything else the same, plus 450y equals 49.50. All right, from this line to this line, we have simply substituted in place of x what we know x to be. All right, now solving for y. Distributing 360. Three hundred and sixty times twelve is forty three twenty. Three hundred and sixty times minus y will be a minus three sixty y plus four hundred and fifty y is forty nine fifty. Combining the like terms here will yield ninety y, so we have forty three twenty plus ninety y is forty nine fifty. Subtracting 4320 on both sides yields 90y is 630. Dividing both sides by 90. And y will be 7. Y is 7 and y was our number of two bedrooms and that's what we're looking for. So the correct answer is E. Number eight, if log base 10 of x equal three, then x is equal to, remember our definition of a logarithm, log base b of some number a equals x can be rewritten is the same thing as b to the x equal a, b to the x power is equal to a. A logarithm is an exponent. A log is an exponent. This part over here, that is my exponent. Notice x is the exponent here. This b is the base. That makes sense that it's the base with that being the exponent. And this connected value is on the other side of our equal sign. So we can convert this logarithmic into an exponential. 10 to the third power equals x. 10 to the third power is equal to x. And 10 to the third is simply a 1 with three zeros. x is 1,000. 8 is b. Number 10. We're looking for cosine of theta. Theta is just a variable like a or b or smiley face. Typically, we use theta when we're dealing with angles for whatever reason. All right, so let's draw ourselves a right triangle. All right, and we're going to call this acute angle, angle less than 90 degrees. We're going to call this angle theta. It says sine of theta is 1 over 2. Recall that sine of some angle is equal to the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. You may remember that. SOHCAHTOA acronym that some teacher uh, told you. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Alright, so if the sine of theta is 1 over 2, sine is opposite 1 over hypotenuse 2. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, 1 over 2. Well, we could find this 
by using our Pythagorean theorem, it's going to be in the square root of 3. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So in our case, um, 1 squared plus, we don't know, squared is going to equal 2 squared. So this subtracting 1 squared on both sides gives us b squared is 4 minus 1. So b is equal to the square root of 3. That's how I got that square root of 3 there. Thus cosine, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So from this same angle, the adjacent would be square root of 3 and the hypotenuse 2. Cosine is equal to square root of 3 over 2. 10 D. Alright. Cosine, I should say, of theta. On this left side, it should say cosine of theta. Alright. Number 12. For what real numbers x is the value of x squared minus 6x plus 9 negative? Another way to say that is when it's less than 0. We want to know when is x squared minus 6x plus 9 less than 0. Alright, so what we want to do first is is solve the associated equality. I'm, I'm going to look at x squared minus 6x plus 9 equal to 0. Um, when you do, one way to solve this is by factoring. It turns out that this is a perfect square trinomial. It's going to be x minus 3, x minus 3. So the only value of interest is is since we have these two exact same roots, we can simply set one of them equal to zero, and we get x is three. That is our critical value. That's where we need to really look at. So draw in a number line, and we're going to just zip three on in there. Here is zero, just for reference. Let's look at values less than three, like zero. Okay, substituting zero in here, we would get... 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 9. The question is, is that less than 0? Well, that's 0. That's 0 plus 9. Is 9 less than 0? That's false. That's false. So 3 and below does not work. All right. We would not want this area over here. We need to look at 3 and above, like 5. Let's try 5. Substituting 5 in here. 5 squared minus 6 times 5 plus 9. Is this less than 0? 5 squared is 25. 6 times 9, I think that's 30 these days. Plus 9, is that less than 0? Well, 25 minus 9 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 9, that's a positive 5. Is positive 5 less than 0? That's false as well. So, over to the left, no good. To the right, no good. And and it can't be exactly 3 because if we did exactly 3, we know it's going to yield 0. And 0 is not less than 0. So, in fact, there are no numbers, 12. There are no numbers for which this expression will be negative. And it's pretty clear at this point right here. If If you substitute, if you look at this right here, I'm going to make this change. The left side, I'm going to write it as x minus 3 times x minus 3. The question is, when is this less than 0? Well, hopefully you can see that's x minus 3 squared less than 0. So we're saying something squared is less than 0. That won't ever happen for the real numbers. Any real number squared will be at least 0. So there are no reals. No reals satisfy this statement. 14. In the xy plane, the graph of y equals x squared and the circle with center 0, 1 and radius 3 have how many points of intersection? All right, let's see if we can maybe look at this a little bit. Okay. We'll just make some tick marks out on this for hopefully to help us out a little bit. We want a circle at center 0, 1. So here is 0, 1. And we want a radius of 3. So out 1, 2, 3. This would be one point up 1, 2, 3. That would be another one out from here. 1, 2, 3. Out here. Down 3, 1, 2, 3. Maybe here. 
and I need to, to draw an unfortunate circle. Maybe I got a circle drawer on this thing. All right, there's my circle of radius three. Mm, kind of nice. Now I want to uh, graph y equals y equals x squared. All right, that's a parabola. So let's just look at a couple points when x and y. When x is zero, we know y is zero. When x is negative one, y is going to be one. When x is um, negative two, y will be a positive four. Positive one will pair with one. Two will pair with four. Let's just look at those points. Here's zero, zero. One, one would be here. One, two, one, two, three, four. I believe that's going to fall outside of our circle ever so slightly. Um, one, negative one will pair with one here, and two will pair with four. It'd be close to our circle. Really, really doesn't matter for the purposes of our drawing. What, what we can clearly see here is that this parabola will clearly intersect this circle two times there and there all right we could find what that um, point is if we were so inclined but we're just looking for how many points 14 C all right 16 what is the total number of orderings we're looking for the total number of orderings for UTVW all right hopefully you remember from this last year we did all that combinatorics counting situation we have four letters draw yourself four blanks one two three four the multiplication principle um, we want to pick a letter here in this first position well we have four options so the number four would go here well, whatever we picked here cannot go in this second spot, so there will be three. Whatever we picked in these two could not go in this third spot. There will be two, and then we would only have one number left over. So this is 4, 3, 2, 1. That's 24. You may also remember this This is 4 factorial. The way that um, the way n number of objects can be arranged in some order is n factorial. If repeats are not allowed in this case that that would be clearly not so it's 24 16 is e 18 what is the value of a sub 3 that is the third term okay it says a sub n is defined as a sub n minus plus 1 that's the next term is 2 times a sub n that's the previous term plus 2 so it's saying the next term is the two times the previous term plus two and they give us the first term is one so a sub zero is equal to one a sub one the next term is that previous term that one two times that plus two so two times one is two plus two is four the next term a two is two times the previous term in this case four plus two 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10. The next term, a sub 3, is 2 times our previous term, our 10. That number is going to go here. Plus 2. 2 times 10 is 20, plus 2 is 22. Eighteen is E. A sequence is defined as the some term, the a sub n plus one term is equal to the previous term, a sub n, and we're going to do some things to it. So you have to find the terms in order, like we've done over here. All right, number twenty. Which of the following must be true? We're looking for a true statement. We're given that f of x is equal to one-third of the x power. This is an exponential function. We have the variable and the exponent. Our input variable x is in the exponent. Notice it's one-third of that power. When you have some number to a less than one, between zero and one, this is going to be an exponentially decreasing situation. If you graph this, it would look something like this where the the line the curve would get closer and closer asymptotically close we say it gets close it decreases and gets closer and closer here to the x-axis well let's just look at a couple of of values 
we got x and y or f of x in our case. If we substitute 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay, if we substitute 1, 1 third to the first is 1 third. If we substitute 2, substituting 2 in there for x, 1 third squared is 1 ninth. And you would continue to see this situation. Each successive term is going to be 1 third times the previous one. This next one would be 1 27th. So as x increases by 1, y, f of x, the output over here, is multiplying by 1 third. That is because this one-third multiplier is because of this one-third here taken to some power. So, which of the following must be true? And it's saying A is less than B. A is less than B. All right. F of A plus F of B is 3. No, I mean... If we don't know specifically what A and B is, it's not going to be one specific constant. That, that's pretty absurd. F of A plus one-third is F of B. No, our change is a by multiplier, so that's no good either. F of A equals F of B. No, uh, the definition of a function, um, well, if A is less than B, their outputs will not be, if you take one third to two different values, the outputs will not be equivalent. And you can see here this function is one to one. For the exact reason that I said it, it's going to be this last one. It's not D, all right? It's going to be E. F of A is going to be greater than F of B. This is the Y values, the output. We know that a is greater, pardon me, A is less than B, all right? If A is less than B, that is, we are to the left, we are moving to the left x-wise, all right? So as A is less than B, the output, F of A, is going to be greater than F of B. Number 20 is indeed E, all right? Since A is less than B, the output of A will be greater than the output of B. That is correct. As x is increasing, as x is increasing, y is decreasing, our function is moving downward the whole, over the whole real numbers. So since our function is moving downward, the output of a smaller number will be greater than the output of a larger number. 20 is e. All right. If you're interested in number two, I'm going to now look at it. Okay. We're looking for the value of x as some expression in terms of a and b. You can see all that here. All right. The first thing I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is to subtract 1 over a on both sides. What I'm, what I'm looking to do here is just isolate my variable x, even though it's a 1 over x. Subtracting 1 over a on both sides, that yields, bring it over here. On the left, the left expression is 1 over x. My right side expression would be 1 over b minus 1 over a. All right, I want to get a common denominator in my right-hand side. Well, hopefully you see that's going to be a, b. Okay, on the left one, um, from, from b to a, b, we picked up an a, so multiplying by an a in the numerator. 1 over a, we picked up a b, so multiplying by b in the numerator. Thus, I can now write the right side is a minus b over a b. That's equal to 1 over x. All right, um, cross multiplying at this point. x times x times a minus b, I will simply write as x a minus b. 1 times AB, we can write as AB. Now solving for X, I'll divide by the, the binomial parentheses A minus B. X is equal to A times B divided by A minus B. And that appears to be D. Pardon me, pardon me, that's E. That concludes this video.